Welcome to Electron Line. And now for the important part is the notation. How do you actually evaluate a function? How do you write that notation down? And that's a really important thing. And we're going to show you where the pitfall is. So first of all, we're going to show you graphically how you evaluate a function. This may not be very useful to you, but it's an interesting analogy. So let's say we have a box, which is the function f of x equals x plus 1. And we're going to put in some input into that function. What does that mean? It means a value for x. We're going to let x be some value. Let's say x equals 3. It goes into the function and out comes the output where y equals 4. So the input is the value for x and the output is the appropriate value for y depending upon that input for x. And that's what a function does. You put in a value for x and out comes a value for y. But how do we write that? Well, we write that f of x equals x plus 1. Remember that we started with y equals x plus 1, which means that f of x equals x plus 1 because y equals a function of x. So we can write that because y is a function of x. All right. Now we need to evaluate it. We're going to evaluate the function. This is how it's properly written. We say that f, the function, is going to be evaluated for the value of x equals to 3. So what is that equal to? Well, now what we do is we take the function, and wherever we see an x, we replace it by its proper value. So instead of writing x, we write 3 plus 1. And so that means that f, when x equals 3, is equal to 3 plus 1, which is equal to 4. And that is the proper way of writing it. Now, what you will see a lot as well, even in your textbook, which I don't like at all, is the following. They'll take the same function, and then what they'll do is they'll go this, f of 3 is equal to. Now, what this implies is that, well, I really meant that x equals 3 because it was f of x. So instead of x, I put in a 3. You should know that it's x equals 3. But I don't like that at all because it's really confusing. But it is correct. So that means that I'm going to reply, replace every x with a 3, so 3 plus 1. And so we say that f of 3 is equal to 4. So this simply means the very same thing as this. There's no difference between these two things, except for one thing. This is a lot clearer and straightforward. This is often confusing, because what variable were we talking about? What function? And I like this way better than that. Now there's another thing that some people will do, which is absolutely wrong. They'll do this. They'll go y is equal to 3 plus 1. So they'll start with the function y equals x plus 1. Now they evaluate it. They simply replace x by 3 and they go y equals 4. Well, that's of course not correct. y isn't equal to 4. y is equal to x plus 1. y is only equal to 4 when you evaluate it. In other words, you can say that y when x equals 3 is equal to 3 plus 1, and y when x equals 3 is equal to 4. That's the right way to do it. This is the wrong way to do it. That's just the lazy way to do it. And we can get really confused because you say, okay, y is equal to x plus 1, y is equal to 3 plus 1. How can y equals x plus 1 and y equals 3 plus 1 at the same time? Well, only if x equals 3, and then we have to specifically indicate that. We're evaluating the function, we plug in a particular value for x, and then we evaluate it. Don't do this. Do it like this, or do it like this. This is the proper notation. That's how we evaluate a function properly using the proper notation. This, uh, the book does this a lot, but I don't like it because it's confusing. You forget the connection between the number 3 and the, and the variable x. And then you could do it like this. It doesn't matter. It all means the same thing. But this is definitely, in my book, the, prefer, the preferred way of evaluating a function properly using the proper notation. So we'll see all kinds of examples that are, of course, a lot more complicated than this, but you get the gist. This is how we do it, and that's what I recommend. Hmm. That way confuses me. Too many equal signs everywhere. Which way is that? The way that you like. This way? You don't like this way? Uh, this is way too many equal signs. Oh, I, you you rather do this? Yeah, well, I, I mean, the thing is that you have, there's just too many notations everywhere. You have f of x equals that, and then you have y equals f of x. And that 
confuses you already. And then all of a sudden you put x equal to 3 inside the x. So I'll put x equal to x equal to 3. None of that's making sense to me. It's equal signs everywhere. And no, I don't like that. We have definitely a disagreement in this house. No, just like that. <laughs> Some people like it a certain way. Some people get confused. And I get confused. Well, obviously, you see this a lot in textbooks. I have seen the confusion in my son and my students, actually in lots of students, and they're squared away when they see this instead. They go, oh, that's what they're trying to do. So I've seen this work, and that's why I tend to move to that. If doesn't see a work, doesn't want to be embarrassing themselves. <laughs> uh, there's equal signs everywhere. Why is there so many equal signs? For me, that's, that, that was my biggest issue. Okay. Too many equal signs. There is indeed two equal signs in there, but one of them is in parentheses. That's I didn't, that didn't mean anything to me. <laughs> because there's parentheses in the equation all the time. But it's technically absolutely correct. There's no, this is absolutely correct technically in the way it's written. There's oh, nothing not wrong that. with that writing. I'm just saying there's nothing wrong with it. It's just confusing for some people like me. And, and therefore, I always say, if you don't like it this way, you can use this way, you can use this way. However, this way, I would strongly recommend you don't do this. Yeah, but you use it all the time later on when you're, do, when you're doing higher, when you're doing a higher science, and then by the time you get there, you just go, and, because that's a lazy way, and it works, and everybody knows what that means. It's the lazy way, and it causes confusion. Not really. Not if you, are, you do later math and later physics stuff. You do it yourself. Don't lie to me. Well, but I usually put in let x equal something before I put it in like yeah. that. I make a notation. That's right. I always make the differentiation that well, yes. Make the notation and it works. All right. So what you're suggesting is that y equals x plus 1 and then let, okay. let x equals 3. So you have y equals 3 plus 1, y equals 4. Yes. <clears throat> That's, That's kind of acceptable. That really bothered me too. Ah, uh, yes. So the and that used to bother me as well. well Why? I'm glad that it used to bother you, but at one point it bothered you. Yes. And so the question is, why do this and why do that? Yes. Right? Or even this. So how about y three equals three plus one? Why write that? Right? I don't recommend that. I recommend that you go to the function notation. This is still the cleanest way to do it. So that's why it bothered me that y is equal to f of x, which is equal to something else. And then sometimes you write, you write f of x equal to something like that. Yeah. You know, and you're right. Initially, I was bothered by that. But then when somebody pointed out, you know what? This is exactly the same. It doesn't matter if you write this or that. It's the same thing. Once I got that in my head, I go, okay, it's the same thing. I don't have to worry about it. No, 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 no. It's not like somebody pointed out. You already finally had enough problems, and then you realize, oh, this is what it meant. And that's not like somebody pointed out, and it was, oh, bingo. It's just that like you have done enough problems, and all of a sudden it clicked. It was kind of like that. No, your memory is not serving you. That is true. That was a very long time ago. <laughs> it really bothered me, the Y and the F of X. How are you doing this? It's like notation again. Telling me two different ways of writing the same thing. Yeah, and you'll see later in this set of videos that there's a really important reason for writing y equals f of x. Yeah, but it's still confusing. We need to unconfuse it. That's why we're doing these videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because it's, it's really important that we get comfortable with that notation y equals f of x. It's really, really important. Well, to me, this is like, you know, you're going from, from your home to a place that somebody's never been to, but you've been to it probably 50 times. And then all of a sudden, one way you're, you're teaching somebody how to get there, and say, okay, this is how you get there. But the next time you drive with the person, you can take a completely different route. And then the person says, wait a minute, which way do I go yes. again? Yeah, it does help to get familiarity, to get comfort with it, but definitely you'll see in the videos to come. This is big. This is important. And that's why I stress it as much as I do. We'll see. And I'm stretching that y equals f of x equals something else. It's really confusing. <laughs> okay. Stay tuned. We'll show you.